Tonight on Q2, mountain lions coming closer to town. If you relocate them, they come back. We'll tell you about two recent cases involving these big cats, plus a trip down memory lane. The 125 years of excellence, it's mission critical that we remember where we came from, and it's critical that we remember our legacy. The history behind Billings' oldest hospital and why they're celebrating all year. And playtime with a pup. I'm Alina Howder, and this is Theo. Theo is part of the only certified animal-assisted play therapy team in the state. We'll tell you more coming up. A therapist and her furry partner making a unique difference here in Billings. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Monday. I'm Russ Riesinger. A family looking for answers after a young woman was attacked in the Billings Heights as she was throwing away garbage during a shift at work. Now they're making a plea on social media and spreading a tale of caution. MTN's Jackie Coffin has more. It was this spot between Edgewood Vista and 3G's on Wicks Lane that a Billings woman says she was assaulted out of the blue while she was taking out the trash. Now she's hoping neighbors with cameras can come forward to help her find who did it. This is where it all happened. A routine walk to the dumpster that took a violent turn. And one this employee at Edgewood Vista, a memory care facility in the Heights, never saw coming. When I threw the garbage in, I turned around to walk back to the building and I heard running behind me. And when I turned around, I got popped in the face and it went black from there. We are hiding the victim's identity because she is afraid of another attack, but Billings police corroborate her story. She says Sunday night, two women ran up behind her, punched her in the face, and tried to stab her. The attack only ending when another co-worker came outside. My employee wouldn't have came out, A, probably would have killed me. Police are still investigating, trying to figure out who did it and why. At first, I was thinking it was random, but they didn't steal anything. I still had my keys, phone, ring, watch, everything, so they didn't try to steal from me. So that's how I think it wasn't random. The woman's relative, Star Emery, says living in the neighborhood, the whole family is rattled. And we're only three blocks away from where the attack happened, so I don't feel comfortable letting the kids play out in the yard. Um, without supervision because we can't guarantee that they're safe. The young woman who was attacked believes the attackers may be someone who know her, perhaps stemming from an old feud. But her family isn't convinced, worried she might have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm a little bit concerned about the rising crime that's been going on in our community and the rising gang activity, the assaults happening in our schools and now in our homes. So it's scary. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Two juveniles have come forward today taking responsibility for vandalizing the United Christian Church in Miles City. Last Sunday, the church said the vandals placed an anti-LGBTQ plus message over their sign and ripped down their pride flag. Police investigated the incident as a possible hate crime. Miles City PD says the two juveniles turned themselves in and that their information will remain confidential. It's unknown if any charges will be filed. Montana's wildlife making news headlines across Montana is not exactly new. This weekend, however, it was mountain lions causing a lot of trouble. Fish, Wildlife and Parks shot one big cat in Lockwood, while another is being blamed for killing several chickens in Edgar. Our Haley Monaco dives into both cases. This is the Lockwood neighborhood where one mountain lion was recently shot and killed. Now neighbors tell me it was actually shot first in a tree a bit further down and then ran into the neighborhood. Officials tracked it here and then shot it in front of someone's home. This quiet street had quite the day Saturday when a mountain lion was euthanized by game wardens. This photo shows just how close it ended up to a home. So the problem that we see is these cats are getting so used to humanity. According to Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, residents in the area had reported seeing the animal multiple times over the last week. The animal was reportedly in poor physical condition and was showing dangerous and bold behavior, such as hunting during the day. According to state policy, relocating mountain lions is prohibited because of the many failed attempts to relocate in the past. If you relocate them, they come back. And that's not the only community dealing with mountain lion mayhem. Here in the small town of Edgar, one man is claiming there's a new resident in town, a mountain lion terrorizing his property and killing his livestock. And I'm afraid for the dog. 
It was not afraid of me at all, or of a running lawnmower. Nev Harding says he and his 12-year-old Great Dane have seen the mountain lion many times. Standing right in front of me was a, a mountain lion, broadside, just looking at me. Luckily, his dog was able to scare it off that time, but Harding claims something has killed three of his roosters and 13 chickens. If it was totally removed, I wouldn't have a problem. Harding says he has reached out to FWP and Billings, but was directed to Helena. FWP and Billings tells MTN it hasn't received any reports of mountain lions in the Edgar area. But mountain lions are common here in Billings and beyond, and with activity on the rise, many from Lockwood to Edgar are on high alert. In Edgar, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Here's Doppler radar over the last six hours, and you can see we were started with more active weather. The blue flicker is showing some lightning. Now as we start getting here past 10 o'clock, things are starting to wind down. We'll see a little more activity into the mountains through the, even the overnight, but it's quieter across the eastern plains. As we get into the next couple of days, the light green shaded areas show where we have at least some chance of general thunderstorms again tomorrow. A lot of that could be favoring northern Wyoming, but we're also looking at the possibility of some strong to severe storms developing down around Denver as we get into the next couple of days and by the time we get to the middle of the week the severe weather is off into the central plains but notice we don't escape the chance of at least a few stray thunderstorms forecast is coming up former president Donald Trump's legal fight over his alleged attempts to change the outcome of the 2020 presidential election is just getting started with both sides filing new court motions the special counsel who's charged Trump in connection with January 6 and his efforts to overturn the election has filed a request for a protective order. They seek to put restrictions on Trump publicly releasing evidence shared with his legal team with prosecutors citing a recent social media post in which Trump said, if you go after me, I'm coming after you. The Trump legal team says the Department of Justice is trying to keep their client quiet and submitted its court filing this afternoon, arguing for a much narrower protective order than the one requested by the DOJ. The Magic City's first hospital celebrated a very happy birthday today. That's right, St. Vincent Healthcare has been serving Billings and the surrounding communities for 125 years. Tonight, our David J takes us for a trip down memory lane. The cornerstone for St. Vincent Hospital was laid in 1898 at what is now Central High School. The hospital eventually moved to this spot at 12th Avenue North and North 30th Street. And they're celebrating that day, August 7th, 125 years later. Soul Funk Collective played at a special picnic to commemorate the start of St. Vincent Hospital. Today is a super fun day for us here at St. Vincent. We're celebrating our 125th anniversary. St. Vincent Healthcare President Jen Aldifer says, with the hospital's changes in more than a century, the one thing to stay the same its mission. The sisters came together and they answered the calling in partnership with Billings Mayor at the time and Billings First Catholic Priest at the time. And they really saw a need to serve the poor and the vulnerable through providing hospital care. The Sisters of Charity of Leavenworth, Kansas had already started hospitals in Montana and invited Dr. Henry Chapel to be part of a proposed hospital in Billings. He finished medical school in Toronto, Canada and then came down here. Uh, and at the invitation to begin a hospital with the sisters. Sister Eileen Hurley serves on one of the boards at the hospital, which helps ensure that the sisters' ministry remains. They continue the mission, vision, and values of the Sisters of Charity of Leavenworth. When you walk into this hospital, you see it on the walls, but you most likely experience it in all the people. A lot of the history is on display, and St. Vincent will celebrate its 125th anniversary for the next year. St. Vincent has a long-standing legacy of providing faith-based, whole-person care, and we really feel that the sisters brought that charge to us, and it is our responsibility to live out that legacy. That's how the mission and ministry continues, through each one of us, of how we do what we do, and how we treat one another, which is with kindness, humility, simplicity, and charity. In Billings, David J. MTN News. Three coal-impacted communities in Montana are getting more than $627,000 in grant funding. The Montana Coal Board awarded Bighorn County with $250,000 to purchase radiology equipment for the Bighorn Hospital in Hardin. 
Levina Public Schools received $250,000 as well to replace a boiler at the school. And lastly, $127,000 will go to Ashland Public Schools to install a new gym floor. The Montana Coal Board awards these grants to counties, communities, school districts, or uh, tribal communities to help them provide services or facilities needed as a direct consequence of an increase or decrease in coal development. Well, still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, play therapy with a twist. We'll show you what's catching on in Billings and why it's so popular. And in sports, ready for some football? The Grizz kick off camp in Missoula. We'll take you there coming up a little later. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. The concept of play therapy isn't new, but animal assisted play therapy is something you can only find in one place here in the state. And that's right here in Billings. Arlena Howder has the story of a Billings therapist and her pup partner. They're only one of 41 certified all across the world. This is Theo. Him and his owner Karen Bow make the only certified animal assisted play therapy team in the state. It's a unique approach that's making a big impact in the lives of kids. Unlike most pups, Theo the dog has a job. Sit. Aww. He's a canine counselor helping kids like nine year old Taylor Asbell through play therapy. I get to like a mix stuff with her, like, like slime. Or, or I get to like play, play, play with Theo and, and, and um, go to the um, park. Younger kids don't have the cognitive ability to explain how they're feeling, which is where play therapy comes in. Yay! The idea is that the items or the toys are their words. And so, you know, you create a space for that with all the things around here that you see and then you just let them play out the process. Karen Bow with Kid Counseling Montana says play therapy isn't new. Do you like broccoli? But what she offers with Theo is something you won't find anywhere else in state. No. A lot of the little guys that I have that have lots and lots of trauma and really difficult time developing relationships oftentimes can develop a relationship with him versus with other people. And it really does help reduce their behaviors and helps them in school. Karen and Theo helped Taylor with her own trauma after this school bus accident in Lockwood last winter. You may remember the story on our airwaves. She was on the bus when it happened. The, the bus slid off and thankfully nobody was hurt, but the bus tipped over. She f had some real strong anxieties about getting back on a, on a school bus. With Theo's help, Karen used play therapy to help Taylor get past her fears of entering a vehicle. He like wants me to, to like pet him and I and I pet at him. Kind of helps her calm down. Karen like I'm gonna explain it in like um in a way that 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 I can understand it so so, so she could help me um get get through that. And it's something Karen wouldn't have any other way. I get to come and play every day with my dog. It's great, and we help people. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. And joining us again, and once again, our viewers sending in some nice pictures. That's right, there were a lot of storms forming this afternoon, Russ, and here's a couple of looks. Janet shared this one from around the Big Timber area, where even yesterday we saw some more thunderstorms start to develop. Nancy also shared this one from northern Wyoming with some of those storm clouds, but after the storm, you got to have the rainbow, especially when it's a double rainbow from Red Lives. Thanks for sharing. Great job. Isn't that beautiful? at weather at ktvq.com. More beautiful weather on the way. We'll talk about that with the forecast next.